नमस्कार दिस इज एन ऑनलाइन लेक्चर वीडियो ऑन आइजन वैल्यूज ऑफ अ थ्री डायमेंशनल नॉन लिनियर सिस्टम इन मैथ लैब द कोर्सेज दैट विल बी बेनिफिटेड फ्रॉम दिस पर्टिकुलर लेक्चर वीडियो आर कंट्रोल सिस्टम्स एंड रेलिवेंट कोर्सेज सच एज कंट्रोल सिस्टम डिजाइन एडवांस कंट्रोल सिस्टम इंजीनियरिंग एट्सेट्रा द कोर्स इंस्ट्रक्टर इज मनोशिता असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ इलेक्ट्रिकल इंजीनियरिंग तेजपुर यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ हॉम इंडिया सो हियर इन दिस लाइन वी बिगिन विद द पी एम एस जी or the permanent magnet synchronous generator chaotic model this present video is a continuation from my previous video entitled determining equilibrium points of nonlinear systems using matlab where i had already explained about the chaotic model where on replacing all alpha i's by 1 we got this particular integer order model of pmsg taken from reference 1 as given in equation number 1 the denotations of the state variables x1 x2 and x3 and the parameters say sigma and gamma may be referred from reference 1 Now, if we replace the parameter value sigma by fifteen, as in here, and gamma is equal to one hundred and ten, as in here, the equilibrium points that are calculated are e one, e two, and e three. Now we begin on calculating the Eigen values in a stepwise manner. The first step would be to find the Jacobian matrix of the nonlinear system as given in two. So this is the Jacobian matrix. Corresponding to the state variables x one, x two, and x three. Now, if we see in the previous slide, say the expression corresponding to x one dot, we consider it as f one. Now, if we take partial derivative of this particular expression f one with respect to x one, what do we get? Minus sigma. Again, if we take partial derivative of f one, that is this particular expression with respect to x two, we get Sigma, and with respect to x three, we get zero. That is why we get here minus sigma, sigma, and zero. Similarly, if we consider the second expression corresponding to x two dot as f two, and go on partial derivative with respect to x one, x two, and x three, we get gamma minus x three minus one and minus x one. Similarly, for that of f three corresponding to the expression of x three dot. And we do partial derivatives with respect to x one, x one, x three. We get this particular expression. Now, what would be the next step? Step number two is to find a Jacobian matrix at e one, that is the equilibrium point. Okay. So here, what are we going to do? We are going to replace x one, x two, and x three as ten point four four zero three, ten point four four zero three, and hundred and nine as given in this particular matrix. Also, we have replaced sigma and gamma by the corresponding values. So here, what do we get on calculating the Eigen values? The first step, that is the step number three, is to find out the characteristic equation. How? By finding the determinant of S i minus J one and equating it to zero. Here, i is the identity matrix and J one is the Jacobian matrix corresponding to equilibrium point one. Since it is a three-dimensional system having three state variables x one, x two, and x three, so this particular I matrix would be three cross three matrix. And on equating it to zero, we are going to get this particular characteristic equation. So the next step is to find out the solution of this characteristic equation. The particular solutions of this characteristic equation gives us the Eigen values. Similarly, the Eigen values corresponding to equilibrium point two and equilibrium point three can be calculated. Okay. So next, on calculating the same, we find out the table one where the equilibria of one and the corresponding Eigen values are listed. Now equilibrium point one, these are the values. These are the Eigen values that are calculated by solving this. Here we observe that there is a pair of complex conjugate Eigen values of which the real part is positive. That means it lies on the right hand side of the S plane. That means it is unstable. Both of them are simple, corresponding to the complex conjugate values. That is why the saddle index of this particular equilibrium point is two, and there is one real Eigen value which is negative. The name of this equilibrium point is saddle focus. Now let us consider the second equilibrium point E two zero zero zero. The corresponding Eigen values are this. Now observe this set of Eigen values: one positive. One negative, one negative. Okay, there is one positive Eigen value. That is, one Eigen value lies on the right hand side of the S plane. That is why the saddle index is one. And this particular 
equilibrium point is known as saddle point. Now let's consider third equilibrium point. Third equilibrium point, we will find that the set of eigenvalues are similar to this. So that is why the saddle index will also be 2 and the name of the equilibrium point will be saddle focus. Now let us move on to the MATLAB window. Welcome to the MATLAB window. So in this particular coding, I have already shown how to calculate the equilibrium points of a nonlinear system in my previous video. So now we directly move on to calculation of eigenvalues. Okay. So we move on to step number one. So what was step number one? Was to find out the Jacobian matrix of the nonlinear system. So here it is the first equation x1 dot, the second equation x2 dot, and third equation x3 dot, all separated by commas here. And then I write down the state variables x1, x2, and x3, all separated by semicolons. What was the second step? The second step was to calculate the Jacobian matrix for the equilibrium point E1. So I'm going to use the command substitute j x1 x2 x3 with the corresponding values of equilibrium point 1. First value x1, second value x2 and third value x3. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to use a command called eig eig. Now eigenvalue of equilibrium point 1 is equal to vpa, I have used a command and eig of j1. Now this particular command does the determinant of si minus j1 and equates it to 0 to find out the uh, eigenvalues. So let me save it. Now similarly for the rest of the eigenvalues corresponding to equilibrium point, equilibrium point 2 and equilibrium point 3 can be calculated similarly. Let me save it and let me run it. So let me see the command window. What do I get here? Okay. So what do I get here? Yes. I get here J. Okay. The first set of equilibrium points, second set of equilibrium points, as we already saw in our presentation slides, third equilibrium point. And then we get the Jacobian J here. Next is J1 corresponding to equilibrium point 1. And then I get the eigenvalues as this set, which we already saw in our presentation slides. Next corresponding to J2, that is equilibrium point 2 for equilibrium point 2. And then these are the eigenvalues corresponding to equilibrium point 2. And these are for 3. Okay. Now let me see how I can plot the eigenvalues. Now, first of all, let me begin with the figure. So I'm going to uncomment this figure and equal this command. Okay. Then I'm going to put the lower limit of x-axis and the upper limit of x-axis, lower limit of x-axis and the upper limit of x-axis. Okay. Then I'm going to name the x-axis and the y-axis. X-axis x -axis is the real axis horizontally with a font size of 14. Y-axis is the imaginary axis with a font size of 14. So this will give us a um, S plane. I'm going to agree on and hold on as well because I'm going to plot all the eigenvalues of all the equilibrium points on the same window. Now let me plot the eigenvalues corresponding to the first equilibrium point using the plot command. Real value of the eigenvalue E1 corresponding to first eigenvalue. Imaginary part of the first eigenvalue corresponding to equilibrium point E1 with a red sign, with a red pentagram. Again, the real part of the second eigenvalue corresponding to equilibrium point E1. Imaginary part of the second eigenvalue corresponding to equilibrium point E1 with a red pentagram. That is R stands for red, P for pentagram. That is a marker. R is the color. And the third equilibrium. Uh, eigenvalue as well, the real part of the third eigenvalue of equilibrium point 1 and the imaginary part of the third eigenvalue of equilibrium point 1 with a red pentagram marker line with 1. Next, I'm going to plot say the axis, x axis and y axis. This one is for the line command that is for y axis and x name is for x axis, all black in color. Let me save it and let me run it. Yes, so I got these other two lines, the axis, real axis, imaginary axis, 
Two iron bellows are on the right hand side of the S-plane that is unstable because they have a positive real part. If I go here, you will find this 1.151 plus 12.97 J. And the one other one will be of opposite sign in the imaginary part 1.151 minus 12.97 J. So saddle index is 2 and the name is saddle foci. Next, what I do, I plot the second set of argent values corresponding to equilibrium point 2. Similarly, but with a different color, a blue pentagon, a blue pentagon, BP, okay? B stands for blue. Now, I'm going to save it. But prior to that, I found that the argent values were somewhere close to 50. So, I have to change the uh, limits of the axis as well. Let me make it 5, okay? 50. Now I'm going to save it. I'm going to run it. Let me see what do I get in the figure window. Okay, I got it as the blue ones are for the argent values corresponding to the second equilibrium point. Okay, so one positive that is one argent value on the right hand side of the S plane to 3.22, 33.22 corresponding to the second equilibrium point. So cell index is one, and the name of the equilibrium point is saddle point. Now see here, I can also plot the third equilibrium point and its urgent values in this particular uh, window. But since they have the same set of urgent values corresponding to equilibrium point 1, so what would happen is that this set of urgent values would overlap the red pentagrams. So I am not plotting it here, but you can plot it for your um, necessary. So welcome back to the presentation slides again. So we saw and did the stability analysis of the argent values corresponding to this equilibrium points for the nonlinear system, which is three dimensional. So now we move on to our next slide. So here we shall have the first assignment that is to give 2D or two dimensional examples of different possible locations of argent values and their names of the equilibrium points. For instance, if it is a two dimensional system then it will con consist of two eigenvalues okay so what could be the possible cases so case number one could be both the eigenvalues are real and lie on the left hand side of the s plane case number two could be both the eigenvalues are real and they lie on the right hand side of the s plane case number three could be say one eigenvalue is on the left hand side and one eigenvalue on the right hand side of s plane or case number four could be both are say imaginary they are no longer real Case number five could be both of them are complex conjugate and lie on the left hand side of the S plane. Case number six could be both of them are complex conjugate and lie on the right hand side of the S plane and so on and so forth. Try to plot the face portraits as well. Okay, So we can now see the reference from where our model of PMS3 was taken. So next we move on to our final slide for any query you can always contact Monoshita and this is my email id is official one there's a personal one it is my phone number stay safe and thank you